please rise as you are able as we begin worship. In the name of God, who makes a way in the wilderness, walks with us, and guides us in our pilgrimage. Holy One, we confess that we have wandered far from you. We have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love and help us love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you and all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again and gathers us all under the wings of love. In Jesus' name, our sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. Our opening hymn is Glorious Things of You Are Spoken. things of you are spoken, Zion city of our God, he whose word cannot be broken, formed you for his own abode. On the rock of ages founded, what can shake your sure repulse? With salvation's walls surrounded, you may smile at all your foes. See the streams of living waters springing from eternal love. Well, supply your sons and daughters, and all fear of want remove. Who can faint while such a river ever will their thirst assuage? Grace which, like the Lord, the giver never fails from age to age. Round each habitation hovering, see the cloud and fire appear for a glory and a covering, showing that the Lord is near. Thus deriving from their banner, light by night and shade by day, safe they feed upon the manna which God gives them on their way. Save your sins of Zion City, I through grace a member am. Let the world deride or pity, I will glory in your name. Fading are the world's vain pleasures, all their boasted pomp and show. Solid joys and lasting 
treasures, none but Zion's children know. Let us pray. Eternal God, your kingdom has broken into our troubled world through the life, death, and resurrection of your son. Help us to hear your word and obey it and bring your saving love to fruition in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. First reading today is from the 55th chapter of Isaiah. Oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourself in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and a commander for the peoples. See, you shall, come na you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, and for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon you. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Word of God, word of life. Be to God. We'll read <coughs> Psalm 63 responsibly. Oh God, eagerly I seek you, my soul thirsts for you. Oh God, you are my God, eagerly I seek you, my soul thirsts for you, my flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Therefore I have gazed upon you in your holy place that I might behold your power and your glory. For your steadfast love is better than life itself. My lips shall give you praise. So I will bless you as long as I live and lift up my hands in your name. O oh God, I eagerly seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My spirit is content as with the richest of foods, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the night watches. For you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My whole being clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. Oh God, oh God eagerly, eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. Second reading is from 10th chapter of 1 Corinthians. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under a cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea and all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, 
and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them, and they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples for us, so that we may not desire evil as they did. Do not become idolaters as some of them did, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink, and they rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did. And 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test as some of them did and were destroyed by serpents. And do not complain as some of them did and were destroyed by the destroyer. These things happened to them to serve as an example. And they were written down to instruct us on whom the ends of the ages have come. So if you think you are standing, watch out that you do not fall. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Please rise as you are able for the Holy Gospel. <laughs> the Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 13th chapter. At that very time, there were some present who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. So Jesus asked them, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish, just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, see here, for three years I've come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? The gardener replied, sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Do you want to come up and do children's sermon? Boom, head up. You want to come up? Come on up. We'll go down here. I think this will work. How are you this morning? Yeah? I know. It feels kind of comfortable to have that to hold on to, doesn't it? So... You ever have anything bad happen to you this week? Oh, yeah. Yeah, bad things like that can happen. Oh. Well, but if bad things happen, do you think that means God doesn't love you? No, of course not. That's just silly, isn't it? So if good things happen, does that mean God loves you? But if good things happen and God loves you, if bad things happen, what does that mean? God still loves us. That's right. God doesn't, it doesn't matter 
If it's good things or bad things, it doesn't. The things that happen to us have no indication of how much God loves us. And that's pretty, pretty cool, isn't it? Because it means that no matter what, God always loves us. And some days, knowing that is just enough to get you through the day, isn't it? You do. Well, I get through the days by playing too, but sometimes I have to get through by knowing that God loves me because sometimes I get in trouble for playing. So, yeah, well, yeah, playing nonstop, that leads to a whole nother sermon. All right. Will you pray with me? Just repeat after me, okay? Dear God, Thank you for loving me, no matter what happens, day to day, good or bad. Amen. There you go. I regret to tell you, I think we'd both get in trouble if you took that back to the pew, so why don't you leave that one here? Because the phrase Deacon, Deacon David said, I could do it, yeah, that ain't going to get through with when you get back to mom. <laughs> I can get you out of a lot of things, but not that one. <laughs> All right. Head on back. <sighs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> a little dry this morning for all the rain that we've been having. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O oh Lord. Amen. God will get you for that. Some of you may remember that phrase. It was rather common on television from B. Arthur and Maud. I wish I could say it was a new idea when it was brought to the screen, but let's face it. God will get you for that is as old as time itself. We love the thought. I mean, we're on God's side and God's on our side, right? So, I mean, we're marked by the waters of baptism. We're regulars for communion, volunteer for good work. And they say, whatever you ask in my name, says Jesus. That's what we're told. I mean, the Old Testament. Let's face it, the Old Testament is a fabulous collection of people getting what they, what they deserve. The desire to find divine retribution uh, against other people is really rooted deeply in our humanity. And we even see it act out in the gospel. Jesus and the disciples are not welcomed in a Samaritan village, and they're turned away. And as they're leaving, James and John ask Jesus, should we pray fire down from heaven on them? And Jesus says, no, that's not how we do it anymore. But we still like it, don't we? I mean, anytime I can find someone else and blame the ill in their lives on divine retribution, it gives me a moment to think better of myself about my own behavior. We love it when bad things happen to bad people. But then we also take it the other direction. If a pillar of the community is diagnosed with cancer, we say such a horrible thing to happen to such a good person. But therein lies the conundrum. If bad things happening to someone or God that is a bad person are God's retribution, then why is it not bad things, retribution, when bad things happen to someone we hold in esteem? Awkward, isn't it, when you think of it that way? But the answer really is simple. 
Bad things happen to good people and good things happen to bad people. And none of it has anything to do with how God views us, loves us, or what God thinks of us. The world is the world. And bad things happen as much as good things happen. I mean, we may want to scream, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When that small child is playing drums on the back of your plane seat all the way across the country. Might be a little personal image there, but it really is wholly disingenuous. The circumstances of our lives have no correlation to the amount of God love God has for us. And that is both good and bad if we're honest about it. We all want to feel like God is willing for bad things to happen to bad people because we can then feel good about wanting bad things to happen to bad people. Couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. It's something I've said and thought on far too many occasions over the last 50 years. And that might be a, bring a personal comfort to me, but it brings no divine comfort and no example of love that I'm called to share with those around me. <laughs> Jesus' point today is that we should live a life worthy of being called followers of Christ because we never know when that life will come to an end and we never know when that person will suddenly bear the fruit of Christ. While there may be causation between my actions and the resulting action, which is a rather academic way of saying that good things rarely follow the words, hey, y'all, watch this. But no matter what happens, there is no correlation of the reaction of my action, which is also a polite way of saying stupidity. There is no correlation between any of that and the amount of love God has for me and the result of my poor choices is just that, the result of my poor choices and not the result of God turning God's back on me. God may not like me in those moments. God may be equally astounded at the stupidity I am displaying. But God loves me nonetheless. And that is Jesus' point. Our joy at the misfortune of others is just that, ours. It is a holy human reaction, which we wish were divine, but it isn't. The Episcopal Bishop, John Shelby Spong, once noted that he felt that the parable of the workers who all work different amounts of time, but all get the same pay in the end. He felt that parable indicated that even in the very last moment, when we have died and come face to face with God, in that moment, no matter what we have done in our lives on earth, we are given the choice to repent and believe and walk into the glory of heaven. Then and Only then is our condemnation to hell sealed by our choosing. For the feast of heaven is open to everyone right up to that very moment. And that's not really comforting in some people's eyes because we want the people who've made our lives miserable to suffer in eternity. And if they can suffer a little bit here too, even better. But I will surmise that I believe the most common phrase in heaven and hell at the end of our time will be the exact same phrase. Really? You're here. Never would have thought that. 
in our living in community, the paradox is we really must focus on ourselves. We must focus on ourselves and ask, are we loving enough? Are we caring enough? And are we forgiving enough of those around us? Can we follow Jesus' example all the way to saying, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. A statement I like to think I can say freely, but I know I don't. Always or often or maybe even ever. No, I, I'm more likely to look at someone and say stupid gets what stupid does, which is not really found in even the most heretical text. But through it all, the important part here is that God's love for us is never ending. And when that love reveals itself through our lives to other people, we don't no, and we have little control over. Jesus' cry of, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me, was cried for each one of us. For from that moment, God who made us in God's own divine image and who, regard, who loves us regardless of whether or not we are likable has never and will never forsake us. From that moment on, God has been with humanity, and that is the promise that was made in the redemption of the cross. Towers will fall. People will do stupid things. We each will do stupid things. Bad things will happen to the people we love and the people we like the least will revel in greatness we deem undeserved. And not one moment of it has anything to do with how much God loves and values us or does not love and value us. For God's love and value in each of us remains the same all the way through our lives. And if we're truly honest with ourselves, each of us needs to find comfort in that fact more than anything. Because when I go through the day-to-day -day moments of my life, knowing that God will never forsake me, never leave me, and always love me, regardless of my stupidity, is what renews my hope when my humanity overtakes my actions. Amen. A lot of prep to move to a hymn. Please rise as you are able as we sing the hymn of the day, there's a wideness in God's mercy. <clears throat> There's a wideness in God's mercy, like the wideness of the sea. There's a kindness in God's justice, which is more than liberty. There is no place where earth's sorrows are more felt than up in heaven. There is no place where earth's failings have such kindly judgment given. There is welcome for the sinner and a promised grace made good. There is mercy with the Savior. There is healing in his 
his blood. There is grace enough for thousands of new worlds as great as this. There is room for fresh creations in that upper home of bliss. For the love of God is broader than the measures of our mind, and the heart of the eternal is most wonderfully kind. But we make this love too narrow by false limits of our own, and we magnify its strictness with a zeal God will not own. Tis not all we owe to Jesus, it is something more than all. Greater good because of evil, larger mercy through the fall. Make our love, O oh God, more faithful. Let us take you at our word, and our lives will be thanksgiving for the goodness of the Lord. <laughs> Let us boldly confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Stand or seated, however you wish to pray. Lord, the words of wisdom that we heard this morning help us to live them, always seeking you first in our lives and remembering what you did for us on Calvary. And so we come together as one this morning. And as we together <coughs> draw close to your heart, oh God, we offer all of these prayers for the whole church, the whole world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church around the world in all its forms, for pastors, deacons, bishops, chaplains, and mission developers, for church councils, committee chairs, 
and all lay ministry leaders for congregations that contemplate difficult decisions about the future of their ministry. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Father, we pray for the health of this planet and for the well-being of its creatures, for lands impacting, impacted by droughts and at risk of wildfires, for fig trees and vineyards that produce fruit for our nourishment and delight, for animal habitats threatened by climate change, and for the turkeys and the deer that we saw this morning just coming here to praise your name and thank you. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. We pray for all those called into positions of civil responsibility for judges, attorneys, and court administrators taxed with uncovering truth and delivering justice for activists and community leaders who cast a vision of a more compassionate and equitable society. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Lord, we pray for all those who call upon you for your awesome mercy. For all who live in poverty and experience hunger, for any who feel tested beyond their strength, for those who are hospitalized or near death, and for all in need of healing. And Lord, we lift to you this morning, Anne, Brenda, Robert, Jim, Larry, Edith, Eleanor, Michael, Sheila, Gary, Nancy, Rose, Chase, Peter, Tanya, Irene, Barbara, Graham, Asha, Diane, Joe, and our dear, wonderful, wonderful uh, sisters in Christ, Hope and Joanne. And those we name in our hearts at this time or at loud before you. Merciful God, hear our prayer, receive our prayer. For the advocacy efforts of this congregation, Lord, you have blessed us over and over and over and over again because we don't officially have a pastor, but we have so many wonderful people like David here and all the others that come and give us your word and we are flourishing. So we thank you and praise you for uplifting us and showing us how to do it and what to do. And the answer is so simple, Lord, follow you. We pray for all. We pray for also for those whose faith leads them to speak difficult truths and engage in difficult conversations and policy makers. For those who promote mercy over vengeance or retaliation, merciful God. Hear our prayer. And this morning, Lord, during this time of intercession, we lift to you one heart from all of us together for the people of Ukraine. We can't even imagine what it is like to lose everything and just have to go out on the street and walk and walk and walk for miles just for safety. 
to be in a hospital and it gets bombed and then to die there. To see our loved ones who are elderly struggling to get, go over that rubble and just walk. So Lord, we pray for all of their needs. We thank you for the border of Poland to be open that they can get food. We pray, Lord, to bless all those who are helping throughout the world. And we pray, Lord, that your justice would be done, that you would touch the hearts and the minds of those who do these bad things and show them your love and righteousness and open their hearts. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. And yes, Lord, we do pray for those whose earthly journeys have ended. We pray for their families. We pray for your comfort and grace to be upon them, to be upon Tracy's family, Jason's family, and Felix's family. And we also pray for all the other saints. You, we praise you for the forgiveness of our sins. We praise you for the resurrection of the body. And we praise you for the love that you have shown us in your life here on earth and your ascension into heaven. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O oh God, on behalf of a world who is in dire need for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord Jesus be with you all. Let us share that peace with one another as appropriately shared. Peace be with all of you who are joining us online today. I ask that you rise as you are able and join me in the words our Lord gave us. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is Restore in Us, O God. <laughs> Restore in us, O God, the splendor of your love, to new your image in our hearts and all our sins remove. O Spirit, wake in us the wonder of your power. From fruitless fear unfurl our lives like springtime bud and flower. Bring us, O oh Christ, to share the fullness of your joy. Baptize us in the risen life that death cannot destroy. Three person God fulfill the promise of your grace. 
that we, when our searching ends, may see you face to face. Please be seated. Announcements this morning. Uh, virtual midweek Lenten services can be found on the Facebook page. Um, if you need ha uh, help with access, please reach out to Cassie here. I have to go to this side, it's bigger. Uh, <laughs> Council of Churches is offering soup and sandwich lunch during Lent, uh, each one hosted by a different congregation at noon. This week uh, on Wednesday, the 23rd, will be First Baptist in Ilion. Uh, Women in Faith, Patsy is leading a Bible study on Zoom entitled Let Us Pray. You can get materials in the office. Uh, it meets on uh, the 22nd, which is Tuesday at 7 p.m., then again in April. If you have announcements for uh, the newsletter, please get them to the office sooner than the day before it's supposed to go out. Though so that's the universal deadline in all organizations for publishing, I think. Uh, Faith Alive, March 27th uh, from 9 to 10. Uh, also on the 27th at uh, Zion, New Hartford, the women are invited to a discussion, Faith, Sexism, and Justice. Um, then for the month of March, it's beef stew, tuna, and uh, meat ravioli and canned spaghetti for the food pantry. And I'm always a huge proponent of canned foods and canned openers because what good is food in a can if you can't open it? Then it's just decorative like in most of our pantries. Um, and then you can bring empty ink cartridges, returnable cans and bottles and canned pop tabs to the church for recycling. And that's just another way that the church helps uh, pay for the expenses of, of doing the things that we do. Thank you all for your offerings that come to the church, either uh, dropped off here or mailed in the work of the church continues the work of the church never ends for the church is not a building the church is a people serving one another so thank you for those offerings as they come in are there any other announcements we need to share this morning thank you next sunday faith alive nine to ten then we do service. Then there's the thing at Zion New Hartford, ladies, if you want to go there. They all started to blend together. Oh, fabulous. Baptism Sundays are always wonderful. So pack a lunch. It's going to be a long morning. <laughs> <laughs> and do any of them have anything to do with faith alive or is it just the normal crazy things going on in your head phyllis <laughs> bonna So yes, if you have, if, for those of you who are online, if you're, if you're coming through the building, there's stones in the baptismal font. Please take one. Our baptism is something for many of us. I, I come from the Baptist tradition as a child. I remember my baptism. It was cold, wet, and had been raining for days. Um, I, I, oh, Lord. Um, and they held you down if they thought you needed a little more washing. Um, but for many of us, if you grow up in the Lutheran tradition with infant baptism, you don't remember your baptism. And, but it is a mark on us through our whole lives. Um, and, and it is one that we constantly need to come back around and remind ourselves of the importance of that. Um, because it is one of the, the cornerstones of our faith. So please, uh, I invite you all to, to uh, join in this conversation. Join. That's fabulous. So 26 folks for the for uh, us hosting the Council of Churches luncheon and $85 for the food pantry. It, it, yes. And I'm 
the young guy and here they are strength and unity things and, and they're different ones and this is really fun because baptism means so many things not just to us individually but to us at, at different parts and times over our lives it is a living part of our faith that may be marked in one moment but it, it is something that lives and change and the meaning really expresses itself anew each and every day. So I love that. Any other announcements? Happy to be here with you always. So if there are no more announcements, please rise for the blessing and dismissal. You are children of God. We are anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and always. Amen. Let us go in peace. Jesus meets us on the way. Thanks be to God.